Thank you so much. Right now we go to the council, and each council member has five minutes on this issue. Starting off with Mr. Berlin Boyd. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, my question is directly towards um, it's like it's water, so please just work with me and answer these pretty fast. Um, the opt-out uh, option, what's the status, and give me the answer as far as opting out, will that be rolled out prior to, will they receive notice, give me that answer please sir. We made a commitment to City Council that anybody could opt out and it would be no charge, we've kept that commitment. When we rolled out the 60,000 smart meters, about 3.6% of the customers opted out, and uh, they all did that at no charge. Okay, as it associates with rates associated with opting out, what are the rates to opt out? Because I've been hearing these rumors and they're saying rates are going to go up, you have to pay this substantial fee. Are there any rates associated with opting out? There are no rates or fees associated with opting out. Thank you. Next question. As it pertains to um, the, the uh, smart meter cost, and people are saying that rates, I have a smart meter, I've noticed my rates decrease, my rates have not gone up. Will there be a rate increase with the deployment of smart meters? Smart meters will not cause a rate increase. In fact, they will pay for themselves and give us substantial operation savings in years to come. Another question, you said $40 million savings that will occur if we implement smart meter deployment. That $40 million, since it's a major savings, can we, where would that money go at the time of the savings once we occur that? And those are annual savings that we will realize upon full implementation. And we'll get to those savings gradually as we implement over a five year period. And our plan is, is that we'll take some of those savings and actually hire about 80 construction and maintenance workers that will be devoted to improving and rehabilitating our infrastructure in the electric, gas, and water divisions. That kind of investment would only be possible if we had a rate increase, except for the fact that smart meters will let us do that through the savings we get through smart meters. Okay, thank you. In-house insulation, I hear this all the time and I know I've kind of stuck my neck out with the uh, unions on one, I don't recall exactly what it was. They said they could do something uh, for in-house, came back, I think it was power lines at one point in time, came back that they could not uh, function, do the work. Uh, what's the status with saving $25 million led in-house uh, install these meters? The uh, first 60,000 meters that were installed were all installed by Memphis Light Gas and Water employees. Uh, that really taxed our ability. Uh, as we go for full implementation, that'll be the installation of 200,000 meters every year for five years. We cannot do that with our existing workforce, but we've committed that 50% of the work hours involved with installation of the meters will be done by MOTW forces, and the other 50% of the hours will be done by contractor. Okay, as it pertains to minority vendors, can you please give me a list of those minority vendors and please let me know how many of those minority vendors are local versus the national um, vendors that you have that, that are minority? Yes. And while you're grabbing that information for me, I just wanted to see because I, I wanted to throw something out and maybe we can do an amendment or, or create a resolution to grant an opt out a resolution that gives protection to the general public if this item passed. I don't know if you guys would be opposed to something like that. But I would love to see the language that the unions have uh, that another city uh, put in place. Well, I've not seen the language that you're talking about, so I can't comment on that language. But I can tell you that what we've done in terms of opting out has worked extremely well, and we made a commitment that no one would be charged for opting out, and we've kept that commitment. Now, I think uh, Mr. Bieber here has a list of minority contractors associated with the project. Thank you. Good evening. Um, about $66 million of the project is 
associated with labor and installation. Um, and, and the remaining part of the money is mainly associated with hardware that is not manufactured. Yeah, in, I understand in, that. So of that 66 million, 54 million, 54.8 million uh, is uh, uh, available for the installation and service related cost in the Elster proposal and is allocated to a minority vendor. Apex. Just give me the name. I'm, I'm out of town. Apex. Give, okay, Apex. Apex. Are they local? No, they are not local. Okay. Uh, the the uh, where are Apex based out of uh, Virginia, I believe. Virginia. Uh, are they employing people locally in yes. Memphis? They part of the the contract will require seventy five percent of the installers to be hired locally. All right, you've got two minutes for Mr. Morrison. Thank you, Mr. Continue Morrison. Continue it. Can you wrap it up, Mr. Beeb? Just give me the list and just give me the names of the companies, and so I can. Can I email it to you? That, that's fine. Well, no, I want it now because that's going to determine how I'm going to vote. Mr. Johnson spoke earlier. Uh, he is a $250,000 local minority participant. Okay. What's the name of his company? Shelby Packaging. Huh? And that's 250000 250000 Okay. And then we have another gentleman that spoke, which is F&F and &F Electric, which is a company that's going to be replacing sockets as needed. How and much? That, and that is a $860,000 contract. Are they local? Yes. And what else we have? That's it. Out of $54 million. All right. Okay. Thank you. I'm done.